It's not an exaggeration to say, perhaps reflecting its origins 60 years ago as a committee that gave advice to ministers, that the Pro was a secretive body. Hold the rules prevented it from saying almost anything about individual cases, and information about its processes and performance were jargon heavy and obscure. Prisoners would be given reasons for the decision, but the victim would only be told what the decision was. And before the War Boys case, I've been very influenced by the Canadian court system, which operated with a much greater degree of openness than that in the UK. And I'd set out some proposals for change in the area. But the key issue, and what the rules, the problem the rules allowed us to say, on that key issue, you know, progress was still blocked. So when the decision to release War Boys was made, it came as a shock to those affected. And the actual process of announcing the decision and the lack of communication of being the victims was initially a source of considerable controversy. And once the decision was public, there were demands that the parole board should explain its decision and incredulity. And then there's a question of how a victim is defined. Uh, we know there will be many victims of crimes that happened, but which for many reasons did not result in conviction. The ripples of those harm may, be gone, may go beyond those directly affected, and many will want different information at different times. I think the answer to this doesn't lie in trying to redefine who is or isn't a victim, but in opening the system up to more general scrutiny. And I believe the process in England, where I should copy the Canadian example, the system should be able to harness modern technology to create an online register to ensure that all those who are affected by crime can access the information they need in a secure and flexible way. More contentious is what the board should make publicly available about its individual hearings and the reasons for its decision. What most concerned prison reformers and lawyers who represented prisoners at parole hearings was that if the system was opened up, media and political pressure would be such that it would be impossible for some prisoners to get a fair hearing. I don't think that's right in principle or that it's a position that can be sustained. The argument for fairness and rehabilitation cannot be one for hiding the most difficult cases away. It's necessary to take the arguments on. Parole panels, like courts, need to be robust in making their decision independently and on the basis of evidence, not media opinion, and should set out publicly the reasons for their decisions. We should also consider that if and how victims should have any role in deciding a sentence. But however attractive it might feel, justice is not about personal vengeance. Prosecutions are carried out in the name of the state or the queen, not uh, in the name of the victim. And we should not allow offenders to set the standards for our response to his or her crime. We don't aim to replicate the offense in our punishment. It's not an eye for eye. The punishments the courts award almost always allows for the possibility of reform, however uh, far in the future that might be. And in its processes and decisions, the justice system should respect the rights of the accused and or the convicted, even if they disrespected our rights. So at the time of the original verdict, the victim can provide a victim impact statement that the judge will take into account when deciding sentence. But the parole decisions are about future risks, and parole panels can't reconsider the impact of past offences. 